A comprehensive history of cheating in CSGO. Boys, here we go. Did you see anything wrong there? <laughs> well, yeah, it was kind of obvious. He tracked this poor guy's head right through that box. What you just watched is part of the most famous aim cheating scandal in Counter-Strike history, and maybe in esports ever. There's a good chance you think of these guys when you think of cheating in Pro CSGO, but the reality is that there are a hell of a lot more ways to cheat in CS than by using external programs. This is a comprehensive history of cheating in professional CSGO. But first, I need to give a big thanks to Leadify for sponsoring this video. Leadify is an amazing tool that allows you to track and celebrate your unique Counter-Strike accomplishments. It tracks your personal bests and gives you after-match reports to see how well you did. They even have these little achievement badges that portray your accomplishments from any specific match. You can use the compare feature to compare your performance with your friends. Their special Leadify rating uses advanced statistics to reward smart plays and ignore useless frags, giving a more accurate representation of how you did in a game in That's one cool. single stat line. And hey, even if you're not a numbers person and you prefer the skip, no, 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 no. I, I, I like watching the ad here and there when it's, uh, um, I don't know, when it's not like a gambling uh, ad or whatever, you know, They're like this. I, I know that he's declining tens of thousands and takes one tenth of what he could be getting every video by taking a sponsor like this compared to a gambling sponsor. May as well watch. Substance of the game, Leadify automatically finds your best play from each match and sends you a highlight generated by All Star. Thanks again, Leadify, for sponsoring this video. Follow my link in the description or the pinned comment to sign up for free today. First off, yeah, let's just address the elephant in the room. Forsaken was an Indian professional CSGO player for Optic India. And yeah, he cheated. Apparently, in an attempt to disguise the cheat, he had named it word.exe on his PC. It's honestly shocking. One of the most strangely hysterical things to happen in CS. It is a miracle that Forsaken managed to last so long. Optic India won the Indian qualifier to an event called Extremes Land Asia. They lost- Look at that. More pics of Optic India at Extreme Masters when Forsaken was caught cheating. Word dot exe. <laughs> Bro, it's so funny to me. Lost their first game to Frostfire with a 16-6 scoreline and were one series away from elimination. And Forsaken really didn't want to be eliminated. So he pulled out all of the stops and midway through pulling out another stop, he got caught. Wait, they had a German on the team? Why be? Chet, did his teammates know? Yes. Not all of them though, right? No, they didn't? Okay, okay. Imagine what it's like as a teammate, bro. <laughs> when, you, when you're dead, you're spectating your teammate for Zarkin, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? <laughs> bro. Through pulling out another stop, he got caught. It blew up, and now when you search biggest cheater in esports into Google Images, this smug asshole is the top <laughs> result. Forsaken oh wasn't God. the only CS pro to ever get caught hacking, though. There have been a few significant examples. The other big one was Kali. Now, Kali was not a player on a team ranked 100. That's what he looked like. Kikli nowadays is, um, <laughs> I've shown this before, he owns a car dealership. Kikli went from cheating in CSGO to op uh, uh, renting out cars. And he rented out a car one as well, I've shown this real. before. To Adam First ever BBC wife. scene that I decided that I wanted to get. If you know, you know. Ain't this your exotic car rental at Kickley? Yes. This is the legend himself. He looks so different nowadays. 138th in the world like Forsaken was. Callie was not a player whose first ever HLTV article was about him getting caught. Callie was a star, and he got that banhammer just as hard as any matchmaking scrub. There was no official notice from Valve of an investigation, nothing like that. His ban came with as much surprise to his teammates as it did to the community. One day, his account was vac banned, and that is that. Looking back though, Callie was definitely not innocent. He had clearly cheated in professional games in the past, and his ban was rightfully served. Because of this ban, his new team Titan was unable to participate in the DreamHack Winter 2014 Major. The Major where the other French team, and in fact Cali's former team, won. By cheating, he robbed his teammates of the chance to play in the biggest event Damn. of the year, and cast doubt on their legitimacy. His former teammate Kiyoshima would forever be haunted by cheating allegations, due to the two of them coming up together on Clan Mystic. There have been a few other instances of players being banned wow. for hacking. For instance, Emilio from Team Property being banned mid-match. Did Emilio just get vac banned? What? <laughs> we love that. That what? <laughs> <laughs> what? These two are the most significant due to the notoriety. That is crazy. Also, what the hell? They're sponsored by McDonald's. Bro, where did CSGO Esports go? Sponsored by McDonald's. That is crazy.
anxiety of the Forsaken incident and Word.exe, and how high profile of a player Cali was. Now, let's- Outs, Alcohol ads, gambling ads, McDonald's sponsor. Let's move on to other forms of cheating. <laughs> United States uh, uh, Air Force, you already know. Let's start with something that we're all familiar with as players, in-game bugs. The first notable occurrence of a player utilizing an in-game bug to gain an unfair advantage is fairly clear. Classic. This is a bit of a controversial one, as I personally, and I think most people do now, love the moment and the clip. Of course, I'm talking about the Olaf boost. Despite how iconic it is and how much I love watching the clip of this insane comeback, the only reason that this comeback was possible is because the boost is not fair. There was a clear section in the rulebook of the tournament that banned the use of exploits just like this one, and Fnatic got punished just as such. However, the opposing team LDLC also used a boost that would fall under this ruling during their CT side. After this was brought up, it was decided that the map would be replayed. However, after significant backlash from the community, Fnatic decided to forfeit the replay. Another interesting exploit that caused a lot of controversy was the use of a And this is why even still nowadays, years later, everybody says Baklan everywhere, bro jump spotting bug, where the player would jump, crouch, then uncrouch midair. This would give them visibility up banana without being seen by the enemies. Before PGL Krakow, this bug was discovered, and everyone kinda thought that it was clearly a glitch and it would be banned at the major. However, this did not happen, and the glitch was not explicitly banned in the PGL rulebook. In a shocking display of unity, however, the players all met together and decided to have a mutual agreement to not use the bug. And they all followed through on this promise. Well, almost all of them. Big Clan, the German team, used the glitch anyways, and the backlash towards them for doing this was enormous. Big made it through the group stage of this m Oh my god. Would they have went this far without the, the glitch? Probably not, though. Major 3-0, despite falling 2-1 to Immortals in the quarterfinal, <laughs> and they had an amazing showing. All of this was overshadowed by the unfortunate fact that they abused the glitch to get there. All three of the group stage games they played were on Inferno. Something that- Dude, How did you do that? You have a gentleman's agreement. Everybody is aware that there's a game-breaking glitch right now that can win, win rounds, and then you just still do it. That's crazy to me, bro. Like, the only other gentleman's agreement that I can think of right now, what still is there in place nowadays, hey, is that you don't use an agent. Imagine you just pull up all of a sudden at the major, everybody uses an agent, like one team. <laughs> even, even though everybody is aware, hey, like, yo, go. guys, we, we said we would not do this. That's crazy. JL, yeah, but JL did it by mistake. One time, someone used it and it was JL on Anubis. But, <laughs> bro, that was also crazy. <laughs> he was using it for four rounds, bro. <laughs> he was using the condom skin. Cool. <laughs> Somehow. Oh, my God. And then they took a tech timer or something. We should all be acquainted with recently our one-way smokes. Monacy demonstrated one to us beautifully right here. Oh. The smoke mechanics of CSGO are not good as a whole, as when the smoke is fading, it's better to be inside of the smoke than outside, as your vision is clearer when you are inside. The weird edges of smoke grenades are what's at play here, and Monacy's taking advantage of that in a way where the player on the other side can't see him while he can get kills easily uncontested. His team faced a ton of backlash for doing it, and they they ruled that these smokes were against the rules of the tournament. All right, and that wrap. Fuck easy, bro. <laughs> this is one of my favorite memes. Let me see if I can quickly find. No, I can't find it. Wraps up the in-game bug section. Oh wait, I I forgot the big one. The group of bugs now known as the coaching bug is quite possibly the most widespread scandal in Counter-Strike history. It started with just three coaches, but that number quickly grew, and the number of top teams and coaches handed bans was crazy. I remember when this stuff was first coming out, and every few hours a new clip would come out from Mihao9 about how some new major coach had abused the bug at some point. Mm. This was the start of Hunden's turn from a respected figure in the CS community to someone endlessly associated with cheating and throwing his teammates under the bus. The coaching bug was a bug where the coach of a team could be frozen in place on the map rather than spectating their teammates. Kind of like a security camera, watching over the part of the map that they're stuck in permanently. This is incredibly powerful if they get stuck in the correct position, for very obvious reasons. Some highly respected figures in the scene were struck with temporary bans for the abuse of this bug, such as Gary, Rugga, Lord, and Robin. Cheating does not necessarily have to be related to abusing conditions within the game. An old trick that some coaches used to do was tapping their IGL on the shoulder a few times during a round to convey a strategy. This does not That's what I'm saying, bro! ...happen anymore due to the very strict rules imposed on coaches. Bro, I'm telling you, bro! 
And it's still possible at all other tournaments other than majors. Damn, there were actually some scandals I didn't know. As well, chat, you can just have a guy in the crowd. A guy in the crowd. It's not delayed if, if, if you watch it in the, in the thing. Sometimes X-Ray may be off, but still, you see both POVs if you're a viewer, you know, in the arena. And then in arena games, you just put up, like, thumbs up or something. Katie and quickly, like, boom, done. You know it's B, all B. Choose by Valve in recent years, but there is an even older trick that some teams used to do to give them an extra timeout. In the past, there was no rule that prevented teams from talking during technical timeouts, so some players, specifically from the CIS- I don't know why I said Canyon as an example. Uh, any, any, any pro player. <laughs> oh, shit. Region would cause technical timeouts on purpose. How would they do this? Oh my they god! Helping me get through nice less than three. Device, I've never seen that clip. The CIS region would cause technical timeouts on purpose. How would they do this? They would uh, kick the PC. Yeah, you can see why there's a rule against talking during tech timeouts now. But the holy grail of out-of-game cheating is something that happens not during the game, but far before it even starts. And I suppose, yes, it does use external software, namely Skype. It's time to talk about match fixing. In 2014, a major North American team called Team iBuyPower was scheduled to play a qualifying match against TeamNetcoGuides.com. The problem is that IBP had already qualified for the playoffs, and one of the players on iBuyPower, Dazed, co-owned NetcodeGuides.com. A few months after the hilariously obvious throw leaked texts revealed that to absolutely nobody's surprise, it was indeed a throw. Well, to almost nobody's surprise, apparently Tarek thought that he had actually pulled off the upset. Bro, when you played against I Buy Power when they threw, yeah, were you we like, what the is this shit? Garby. No, dude, I was feeling it. You're, I was all over <laughs> shit. I was fucking, I was You're like, damn! I was like, I'm nuts right now! Oh my god. No, seriously, I was. I know. I was literally like that. Me and Josh were like that. Like we were giving ourselves credit and shit, and like <laughs> talking about this is our comeback into the scene. All of oh Ida Power except God. for Skidoodle was banned, and despite the community's request, Valve has not unbanned any of these players even nine years later. Match you know what's the where part, bro? The exact match is sponsored by CSGO Lounge, bro. Where I think they place some of their bets, huh? Match fixing in CS is not just limited to the I by Power scandal, though. Recently, it's become obvious that match fixing is extremely prevalent in low-tier Asian, CIS, and North American Counter-Strike. With an ESIC investigation into NA match fixing coming out... Any day now, guys, I'm sure. A lot of these players have been exposed, though, even though they haven't been formally banned by Valve. At one point or another, all of the I by Power players switched to Valorant so they could play at the highest level again. And in their case, I think that's completely fair, because they served their time. But some other low-level NA match fixers also switched and have been very successful. Seeing this makes me incredibly unhappy, as these cheaters who have no respect for competitive integrity get to play around in Valorant making massive amounts of money and amassing fan bases. Marved, yeah. Shanks, and Poised, to name a few are all top level Valorant players or streamers and they've been able to get away with match fixing. Don't attack them about this as this isn't a new development. It's been known for years and it's clear nothing will ever come out of it. Fair. While compiling this list I was reminded of just how many ways that it is possible to cheat in CS. If anything this is a testament to the size and fortitude of the CS community as we've pushed this game so far that we now have to innovate upon the ways in which we give ourselves an unfair advantage. Thank you. When is the case battle? All right, it's another one done. Such Congrats video. to me. Let's go. As of right now, I'm still not in CS2. One more reminder. No. I'm probably not going to talk about this anymore. But please, 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 I need access to the game. Uh, <laughs> How? Um, other than that, this video is pretty cool. I've actually had this scripted for a long time. This is a reused script that uh, that I just never ended up making the video for. And then I stumbled across it recently, and ah, I was like, this bruh. is still a pretty fire video. So I just went ahead and made it. I also spent some time working on getting a little bit better at video editing. I hope you guys noticed that. That first segment was really my test for like a lot of the new techniques that I learned. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you next week. Bye. How is he not in the CS2 beta, man? Boys, big W video. Holy smokes. Leave him a follow. Put the bell on. What a content creator, bro.